Welcome back to RuralVacantLand.com. This is Luke Smith, and today I'd like to tell you about a new little venture I've started called Land with Luke. And uh, I just registered the domain name uh, like three minutes ago. Got it all set up, goes to my website, and uh, here's what it is. I've been talking to uh, different attorneys and gurus and all kinds of people to set this up. It's taken me a while. It's a nail biter, it's exciting, it's fun for me. And uh, what it is, is a fund. It's a little fund that I can promote publicly on YouTube and all kinds of places to raise money to do deals. I love doing deals. I love doing real estate deals. And um, I think this will help spread the, the deals around in a, in a nice way. So my story, I started uh, as a stockbroker and uh, my income was up and down and all over the place with commissions and there was gaps in there I needed to pay the bills I needed some kind of asset some kind of alternative way to pay the bills in between my my passion at the time of of doing stock trades and um that uh came by the way of um houses in Detroit Detroit was crashing and the market was bad and the the houses I mean, the banks had mortgages on these houses for two or three hundred thousand dollars, and you could buy them for five or ten or twenty thousand dollars or less, really. But I mean, the better ones for five or ten grand uh, from the banks, and you could fix these things up and rent them out for like eleven hundred dollars a month. And I thought that was too good to be true. So I talked my sister into buying one of them, and then eventually more. And uh, figured out, you know, there's all kinds of problems and lots of things go wrong and there's lots of bills and lots of other bits and pieces to the story, but I still love the, the essence of the trade. And as that portfolio of properties grew with friends and family and others of money coming together to make more and more of those happen, um, the prices went up, the availability of them went away, the banks weren't as willing and able to dump the things or puke the things out. And uh, so I wanted an, another way to buy these houses. I wanted a way to buy them without all the middlemen people and without uh like just not not playing market i wanted some off market better deals i want you know i just want to haggle out some better deals and so i started researching and I, and I found this guru i found this guy on um i think it was on biggerpockets.com uh, steve butala and he wrote a letter on there and he said you know we could we can buy land by sending out letters in the mail and we can offer people cash and, and we can uh, buy them and then we can go put them on the market and sell them for more. And I'm like, really? So he's, he's buying these things and he's buying them without all the middlemen people. He's doing it himself. And I'm like, this is interesting. This is creative. And so I started following his stuff and started learning. And I started sending out letters like he was talking about in his free education and he was saying like $100 an acre. And so I would send out letters for $100 an acre. And I, I couldn't figure out how to get my printer to print on the envelopes and, and like the orientation and everything. And so I would print, I would made a little mail merge and, you know, like 50 letters or 100 letters and um, wrote these letters to different property owners, like looking up the properties on the county websites and stuff. And just get in basic information and mailing these people letters, $100 an acre for desert squares. And boy, did they yell at me. I had everything wrong. Um, but I, I hand wrote the envelopes and I gave them a cash offer and I put my contact information on there and they got back to me. And what I was mainly excited about was when I kept track of it, it was, it was more than 40% of those people that I wrote letters to, they got back to me. They yelled at me and they said, you know, how stupid I was and everything else for making this crazy offer on their property. And they wouldn't sell it for anything less than, and then they'd give me some number. And um, it didn't, the number didn't mean anything to me, but I kept track of it. And you do that with a whole bunch of people. And all of a sudden you see this one over here gives you like a stupid cheap number compared to the others. And I, I didn't know how to use that at the time, but I was learning. And so I paid for the course with Steve Butala and now Land Academy. And um, it was like $1,500. I don't know what they charge now, but it, the course is very much more and different than now. I was like, maybe they're, I was number four subscriber to their, their program. You know, like they were just getting started. And to get started, they gave some land away. And so they gave me a 10 acre piece of property in uh, Elko, Nevada. And I put that thing up for sale on eBay for a dollar. And I sold it for $3,383.33. I remember that trade. I, I, I put a link 
uh, in the description of this video, they'll go back to my website, landwithluke.com, and a link in there to that number one video of me selling that property on YouTube or on eBay. I, I didn't have a website to put it on or anything. I just put it on eBay, and you could put a YouTube video on eBay at that time. I don't think you can anymore. Um, but maybe you can, I don't know. But it, for a dollar and just see where it goes, right? I think somebody bid all threes and somebody outbid them by 50 bucks. <laughs> and it went, and I was so excited because I paid like less than half of that for the program. Um, that was extra cool. And meanwhile, while that was happening, I, I, I learned how to send a little bit better letter, answering questions of what people are going to ask ahead of time before waiting for them to call back and yell at me. And that reduced the returns and responses way down, but it got rid of a lot of the junk in there and got down to people that really wanted to sell their property or give it away or get rid of it or whatever you want to call it. And um, so he taught me how to make the letters a lot more accurate. And he taught me how to uh, get the things recorded with the, you know, on my own and use a notary to go do the trade on my own and everything. And uh, so the first property, I remember the first acceptance I got was in uh, 29 Palms, California. I sent these letters out, a bunch of five acre properties. Five acres is, you know, a nice, easy size property to go after. And so I just offered everybody that had five acres. And uh, I think it was, I don't remember if it was the whole county or the area, but I offered them all 500 bucks. And um, everyone's calling back and yelling and screaming and you're crazy. And, and then this guy calls in, a, in the caller ID, I'll never forget it, it said 90210. And I was like, 90210 is calling? That's that's the show I used to watch as a kid. That's the show in Beverly Hills, 90210. And uh, they would make fun of the crazy Beverly Hills uh, lives that the kids were living. And um, it's like, you know, Beverly Hills is calling. Uh, so I answered the phone, and uh, I was answering the phone anyway, and I was... You know, like, here's my phone here. And I was kind of like this, like, uh, you know, getting ready to get yelled at um, because everybody yells at me with those crazy offers I was sending. Like, please don't yell at me again. I hold it out here. Hello, you know, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I sent you a letter. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, uh -huh. how can I help you? And um, he says, well, I'd like to sell the land that you sent the letter on. I'm like, oh, I almost fell out of my chair. Uh, the guy said yes. I'm like, what's the catch? You know, what am I missing here? And um, he says, well, I'm like, yeah, here it comes. Here's the butt. <laughs> he says, but you got to buy the other one down the street too. I'm like, the other one? Uh, you have two of them? He says, yeah, I got two of them. They're both five acres and there's, there's a street, there's a power line. Like, I don't want them. You know, I, I'm going to... I don't want to leave them to my kids. I don't want my kids to be burdened with them. I don't want. Uh, I don't want to give them to the church. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything. You just got to do all the paperwork, and it's got to be easy. And I'll sell them to you for a thousand dollars. Like okay, I'll do all the paperwork. I'll send a notary to your home with a thousand dollars cashier's check, and uh, she'll ask you to sign stuff. She'll ask you to see your ID, and um, then she'll just send it back to me. You keep the thousand bucks. He said, okay, done. Got his contact information. I called and I started calling around. I found a notary in the area and she charged me $250. I was like so shaken, nervous, you know, like wipe the sweat off my head. Like, holy cow, $1,000 this is a lot of money for me. And $250 is another lot of money for me. I'm on $1,250 into this thing before I even pay for postage. And I've never seen the properties and they're in the middle of the desert. And it's like, whoo. There's some something's got to be wrong here. I'll just give it a try because I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn and then I want to go back to Detroit and I want to buy houses. That was the idea. I want to go back to Detroit and I want to do this to buy houses, but I'll learn in the desert squares. And so uh, we did that and um, s sent the notary, the paperwork, and the cashier. I found out later on $50 is probably what I should have paid her, but $250. Here's your check for you and a cashier's check for him. And she sent it back to me and I sent, you know, got it all filled out and sent to the recorder. And the recorder writes back and says, no, you can't do this. I'm like, oh, no, nah, I lost. And the I talked to her on the phone, like, what did I do wrong? You know, she sent me this letter. I can't understand it. I'm not an attorney. And um, 
she basically broke it down into the moron language so I could understand her. She said, well, you got to have the return address in the bottom left corner and the top right corner. Or in the bottom left corner, you could write, see the top corner for the return address. I'm like, what kind of stupid stuff is this? Okay, so I just hand wrote it on there and I sent it back. And then she uh, she got it recorded. I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's easy to fix if you just ask. And um, so ever since then, I call recorders all the time and get stuff fixed and figured out. And you know, it's no no big deal. Uh, and you can always just go back to the seller. Hey, I made a mistake. I just fixed one last week that was a deal from seven years ago. I think the lady called me five years ago or six years ago or something, and it was one number wrong and. The seller was still alive and she was so happy and now we just did a digital notary. I don't even have to use the the traveling notary and fixed it easy. Um, so my point was it's it's easy to close these things when you learn how and you get past the first one. And I got that property and I put it up for sale and or two properties. I put them both up for sale or I put one up for sale first. I don't know why I thought I'd sell one and then sell the other. I don't know what I was thinking. But I put, I put them all over the internet and I sold one for $4,500, $500 buy, $4,500 sell with some, you know, some little minor costs in between. And, uh, I don't remember what I sold the second one for. It doesn't matter. But that first one, $500 to $4,500, I was hooked like, Oh baby, no more Detroit. <laughs> it's just like land, land, land. How much of that can I buy? Who could I send these $500 offers to? Uh, I could send them to the whole state of New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Nevada. Uh, why not try Oregon and Washington too? So I just start sending them to everybody. And uh, I bought hundreds of those properties and sell hundreds of those properties. Like, well, if $500 works, $800 should work even better. Try $800, buy hundreds of those, sell those. Buy them for thousand dollars, you know, and then two thousand and five thousand, and different kinds of properties. And let's get a little more creative. Let's get stuff with views, like this picture in the background, right? Something that's not a desert square. Let's get something in the mountains. Let's get something with power. Let's get it with roads. Let's get it with septic, and it's gotten more sophisticated over time. And eventually, you start buying. I just sold one yesterday for six hundred and fifty grand. Um, you know, I, it, it's, it's, you sell them different prices all the time. I sold one, the one just closed yesterday for 230 grand. I mean, the prices are all over the place. And, uh, but you can, you can scale into it and land is a great way to learn. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful asset. People always want more land. There's always people that don't want their land because they inherit it because they never used it because the dreams are dead and gone of the house they were going to build there. It became too hard for them or whatever the story is. So there's always don't wanters and there's always wanters and you can dance in, in the middle. And that's a beautiful thing. So I've done lots and lots of those. Um, so as those deals progress, it gets to uh, this deal, landwithluke.com. What do I use the money for? So I'll keep doing those same kinds of deals. And lots of times I line up a deal where I want to buy the property and it looks good, but there's some outlying question. Like, I don't really know if the septic is going to work. I don't really know if uh, I can find a tenant that goes here. I don't really know if XYZ is, is real or not. And so I might get a contract to buy the property from somebody who wants to sell. I'm trying to solve their problem, right? And then I go marketing and I find somebody who wants to buy the property or I find a tenant that wants to uh, rent the property or use the property or make the thing happen, turn it into their business or their home or whatever it might be. And then I know the numbers and then I can sell it on the back of those numbers. And so I line up the buy, I line up the tenant, I line up the sell and I get all the numbers put together before I pay for it. And then in most states, not all states, but most states, I got to grease the gears in between the buy and the sell. And so that's where I'd like to start this fund out. Later on, we'll get into more and more of the deals I do. But the basic lowest risk, easiest um, money that I, I need on a constant basis, like readily easy of access to. And the money goes for a day or two or three or maybe a week between the buy and the sell when I got it all lined up. I think it's very low risk. There's not a whole lot of things to go wrong. If they go wrong and it falls apart, we end up with the land or the building or the asset or the, the real estate behind it. And they just work out another deal and sell it or rent it off to somebody else. 
Um, so it's, it's pretty asset backed and short amounts of hold time and good returns in between. And we can do it again and again and again and again. And so on doing that, I would like to pay out a basic yield on the funds that you put into um, the deal. Let's talk on the phone about the size of funds and, and the scenario and stuff and come up with the percentage. I got an idea of what it is, but um, I'm not going to talk numbers on here. So uh, we'll do that. And then as if when I want to and I can, I'll do bonuses on top of this. And so the idea of the bonuses for me, the motivation for me is for you to send in more money. As you see bonuses paid out on this, you're like, hey, the return on this is pretty nice. I'm going to tell my friend, I'm going to tell my brother, I'm going to tell the other people that we do real estate deals with that Luke keeps sending me nice checks. And um, I think we should put more into his, his deal. And I'll keep the communications rolling of what kinds of deals we're into and what the, the asset values of the funds are and uh, what's backing it up. Um, so I think starting on this really, really low risk um, scenario and building up the asset base above and beyond the net asset value, doing that over time will make it safer and safer and easier to take on a little bit more sophisticated trades and a little bit more, a little bit more, and um, can grow the thing in a nice way from there. Um, so if you're interested in this approach, uh, there's, uh, I'm putting a link in the description of this video. I'm putting this video on my website as well. The link will take you to landwithluke.com, which is like a piece of ruralvacantland.com. And, uh, you can watch this video in description and there's a form you can fill out with your information. And I'm looking for accredited people. This is a publicly promoted, um, advertised fund. I need accredited people. Uh, there's lots of different ways to be accredited. We can talk about those. Uh, you can Google them or search them and see if you qualify as an accredited person. But I'm going to want to make sure you're accredited to sign up into this. And it's registered state by state, uh, SEC, Reg D style. And then as new people come in in new states, I'll register state by state as we go. And then it's a one-year hold period, at least a one-year hold period coming out of the gate. So you're locking your funds up for one year. I don't want to be considered a bank or anything to do with banking. Um, so that those kinds of requirements get me double beyond those kinds of regulations. And so, uh, you put the funds in, kiss it goodbye for a year, uh, you get, uh, payments along the way. And then you can say, Luke, I want my money back out into this state. Luke, I want my money back. Then I want part of it back. Luke, I'm sending more, whatever. We go from there and we work on it from there. The money back is not right away the way the fund is written is it's if the money is is free and available i uh, will send it back to you after the timelines of the regulations and if it's not if it's being used if it's um, predetermined into deals i will delay you and tell you what's going on and i'll try to get you paid as fast as as i can depending on what the deals and the assets of the fund currently are and how much funds you're talking about um and we can talk about that too. So my contact information will be on this page. My contact information is all over the place on my website and, and everywhere there as well. Um, so there's that. And then I wanted to go to the fun stuff, right? If that's not fun already. I want to, I started this YouTube channel out with a lot of live uh, broadcasts. And I had a lot of fun on the live broadcasts. I would... Uh, I would give land away, I would do mailers, I would do, it was, it's a show, right? I answer all kinds of questions. We had great people from the audience chiming in with good stuff going on. And um, that was a lot of fun. But then I had my, my son uh, who is uh, very active and makes it, makes it very hard for me to get the time to totally dedicate to the show. But he's gotten older now, he's in school and it's easier for me to get back to the show. And uh, I'm not going to give land away on the show anymore because I, I gave land to a specific guy and he went to the land and got sunburned and dehydrated and stuff like that. Didn't take care of himself and ended up in the hospital and his family blamed me for it. And they were very adamant that if he didn't, 
win and get that land for me that he would have been in a much better physical shape than he is now. And he didn't have the full mental capacity to take this on. This was the first time he left the house on his own. And uh, I didn't know that. And I didn't have disclaimers and everything else. And if he would have had to pay for it and sign paperwork and stuff, he wouldn't have been able to pull it off. And it was a lot of their points. And I, I see what they're saying. Um, they make some points, but it's, uh, I was just trying to be fun and nice and creative and, and give land away. And so I have to be more cautious about some of the things I do on this show. <laughs> so I think this future, what I would like to do in the future show is uh, I would I would appreciate if you guys would come into the comments and say when you would like live broadcasts sometime during the week while kids are in school. Like so business hours, my kids a specific time usually go to school about 8 a.m. and they're out at two something. So within those hours, um, what day of the week works for you? Not Wednesdays because I do a lot of auctions on Wednesdays, but pretty much any of the other times in the week, I think I could make it work. If someone has preferred times, hit them in the comments. It'd be much appreciated. I'm going to try to figure out like a, a good time to, to roll with it. And I might do extras. And what I want to do is I want to do mailers. I want to do mailers to find tenants, mailers to find properties. I want to do phone campaigns. And I think this will be a lot of fun. I like calling a lot of the brokers that have properties listed and ask questions and see if I can hash out some deals. And there's lots of ways to work deals on these properties. So I think you guys can make fun of me and tell me better ways to do these deals, but I'll try my hardest to figure out ways to do these deals. And there's, there's lots of ways to rework these things. Like uh, maybe it's an empty building and they're trying to sell it and they're not trying to put any money into it. And uh, the brokers got it up for sale, but everyone calls is saying, I want to rent it. And, but they want money to fix it up before they rent it. And like, okay, so you got renters and you got seller and I could come in and I could buy the building, take it, you know, fix something, get your renter in there and sell it the, the next day. I might be able to do it all on the same day. And I think we can do some of those kinds of deals and lots of variations of those kinds of deals in the marketplace live on the live call. And uh, I think we can all learn from each other doing that. I think you guys say, Luke, what if you did this? Luke, what if you did that? And I'll be like, oh, I never thought of that because you guys have been around a lot more blocks than I have. And uh, you guys might learn something from me making the mistakes of doing this that we all uh, benefit. So watch for live calls in the future. I I'm on the fence whether I should keep like recorded versions of them going or not or delay them and then republish them later because I want to work deals off of them and uh yeah, we'll figure it out we'll just fumble through some until we get there and uh but I don't know of anyone else who does that and maybe they have good reasons why and maybe they just don't have the nerve and we can do it and that's that's the plan so there's a long video there's a long display Hit the link below, go to landaluke.com, fill out your information. I'll call you and we'll talk about, about the fund. If you're not accredited, uh, we can still do deals. We can do different kinds of deals where you're the owner instead of it going through a fund and then being some partial owner. And um, I do lots of those deals with guys. I'm kind of overbooked with, with uh, demand for those right now, but we could talk about that and maybe I outstrip the demand and uh, get you in on some of those kinds of deals too. Um, thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. This is Luke Smith with landwithluke.com. See you in the next one.